Hello, welcome everybody to this, the first free webinar in our 2022 Smart Building Series. Happy New Year to everybody out there. And today we are joined by Leo Levitt, Onviv Steering Committee Chairman. Leo, how are you doing? I'm doing good, thank you. And happy New Year to you as well, of course. Uh, today we are talking about open interfaces for smart buildings with Onviv, um, and we're going to be discussing how uh, Profile M from Onviv provides interoperability within a multi-vendor building environment. So I think it will be a very interesting conversation today. Uh, how we're going to do it? We're going to um, uh, enjoy a presentation from Leo for I'd say probably like the first 20 minutes. Um, and then uh, we're gonna open it up to uh, questions and answers. So um, I would encourage everybody listening, if you wanna get involved, uh, please put your questions to Leo or myself. Um, and if you look on your screens at the bottom, there is an icon called saying Q and A. Uh, if you type your questions in there, then we'll be able to get them here and uh, we'll read them out. Uh, beyond that, I uh, just obviously need to say that we are recording this session um, and I'll make sure that that uh, recording um, will be going up on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, the Smart Building Series, um, if not today, later tomorrow. Um, and you will also get a link to that recording uh, in the email um, uh, uh, tomorrow. So, yeah, I think that's it from me for now. Um, Leo, please take it away. Thank you. So... Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, everybody, uh, and uh, Happy New Year. I'm really glad to, to, to join this webinar today. Uh, my name is Leo. Uh, I'm a chairman of ONBIF Steering Committee. Uh, and today I will uh, briefly explain a little bit more about ONBIF, who we are, what we do, why we do it, and also will share uh, the news about one of our latest uh, addition to our portfolio of uh, profiles and specifications, uh, Profile M, that supports analytics uh, and provide the greater interoperability um, opportunities for uh, many industries, including smart buildings. So before we start with Profile M, I would like you to I would like to give you some uh, introduction uh, to ONVIF, because I would guess that not everybody is very familiar with uh, that organization. So ONVIF uh, stands for Open Network Video Interface Forum and initiated uh, as initiative uh, in video surveillance industry. So our mission is to provide and promote open interfaces to security industry for effective interoperability. And this is the mission that we started with uh, years ago uh, and been really, really uh, working uh, hard to uh, fulfill this mission. And our vision is uh, really about interoperability, that all security systems share one interface. As you can see from this slide, uh, the focus of ONBIF uh, from the beginning was within security industry. Now we see that different uh, industries see more of the convergence of different technology driven by uh, different factors on, uh, in the industry and technology development. And uh, we now see that not only uh, pure security solutions are using um, on with interfaces, but also other industries to stri uh, starting to utilize uh, capabilities that we offer. ONVIF have, uh, has a number of cornerstones. Uh, it's, it's a standardization organization uh, specifying the communication and standardization uh, communication between different IP devices in physical uh, industry. Uh, we work for interoperability regarding of the brand and uh, we open to all companies and organizations. So we have uh, today over 500 different members uh, from different industries, uh, different businesses. We're open to all of those. So what we do? Well, as I mentioned before, uh, we develop interface specification, um, focusing on communication between different components and physical uh, security system. We also work with the international startup organizations such as ISC. Um, we um, develop um, uh, 
a, a package uh, of uh, specifications that we combine into what we call profiles and add-ons. This is uh, to make it's really easier to understand for integrators and then customers what specifications uh, are supported, what features are supported. So on with profiles and add-ons is a way for us to, to package, uh, package our specification and bring to the market. Uh, we also develop um, a test tools for both client side and device side uh, to validate the products uh, towards that they're on with profiles and add-ons. So uh, there are test tools available for our members that, that they can use to, to self-certify products uh, against specific profiles. And then that uh, certification is used to list the product among the conformant devices or clients on, on with website. So on we've been founded uh, 2008 many years ago and we've been growing since that so uh, over the of the time that's uh, on we've been active we uh, released a number of profiles uh, those profiles uh, covers uh, a number of functionality when it comes to the video with video streaming storage it also has a number of profiles focusing on on access control um, access control peripherals uh, that is supported by our most recent profile d which released this uh, summer uh, also profile m that we will be discussing a little bit a little bit later today uh, focusing on uh, analytics metadata and events uh, supporting um, the trend of uh, analytics in video surveillance. Um, so the structure of ONVIF as, as organization is totally a member-driven organization. So we have a number of committees, uh, steering committee that I represent here today, uh, responsible for the strategy goals and rules of the organization. Uh, we have technical committee. This is, uh, I can tell that this is something like our R&D, so that this is the organization that works on the core specifications, uh, the roadmap of those specifications, uh, and so on. And then we have technical services committee. This is the organization that develop that's responsible for the test tools, so that the tools that are used to cert certify products. Um, it's also responsible for creation and maintenance of profile profiles and add-ons. And if you remember from previous slides, profiles and add-ons is the way for us to package um, and bring to market our uh, specifications. Uh, and then of course we have a communication committee. Uh, this is our marketing functions. The, the responsibility of this committee is really to drive uh, communication to our members, but also externally to the market. And uh, we have, um, a uh, large number of members. There are different uh, levels of membership from full to up service uh, and with that different uh, privileges. Uh, we have, uh, as of today, I just checked before the webinar, uh, 516 members. Uh, you can see the list of the members on, on uh, www Uh This is where you have all the information about the organization as well. Um, and we have, today over 22,000 conformant products. Conformant products means that those are the products which uh, have passed uh, the, the test with test tool uh, for at least one uh, profile, could be several profiles, but it's over 22,000 conformant products that gives a massive variety uh, and uh, possibility of choice for integrated to pick and choose from different vendors when you're creating uh, a system to uh, different purposes for your end customers. So for instance, for video surveillance, uh, for smart building automations, uh, for uh, production processing and, and so on and so on. So it's a large variety of uh, different products to pick from. And those products are also visible in our uh, database, which is publicly available. So this is the, the, the single uh, and the most correct uh, source uh, of information about what products have what capabilities when it comes to on with conformance. And all that done uh, to, to fulfill our, um, our 
mission and interoperability. Uh, so we see now that um, the, the technology accelerates uh, and the, the technology development accelerates as well. And with that comes complexity of the systems. We also see uh, a multi-vendor environment that evolves more and more, and that brings the variety of different interfaces of this, in this environment. So different vendors uh, starting to develop their own interfaces that helps them to really drive the innovation and come faster to market, but it also create a, a complexity for, for the integrators because uh, proprietary system uh, lock in uh, more and more uh, into their own ecosystem and it becomes difficult to pick and choose from different vendors to fulfill the needs of the specific projects. And as we're coming from surveillance industry, uh, we also see that um, the investments um, in surveillance industry, but also in other industries like smart buildings are very long-term and it will require a, a future proofing. So uh, the, the future, future proofing uh, for us, it's also uh, a possibility to have variety of the products and not being locked in. So uh, enhancing interoperability. Uh, and uh, why is that good? Well, if you are, um, have a possibility uh, to be cost efficient uh, in your system setup to, to pick and choose what's more um, efficient uh, for your own system. Um, it's also uh, allows you to be more efficient when you design the system. It gives you uh, more functionality. It gives you more access to different vendors and they know how. Um, and of course, it gives you a possibility to select components uh, more free, uh, with more freedom than in, in locked in uh, system. And as I mentioned before, interoperability uh, helps you to secure your investment for, for, for the future because it's open. So a little bit more about on with profiles. ONVIV uh, develops a, a large number of core specifications in different areas. Uh, those specifications are grouped into the profiles. So profile, every, every profile has a fixed set of different features that explaining the functionality of a conformant device or client. So, uh, Profile makes it easier for integrator or cust end customer uh, to identify compatible products. So if uh, both system uh, and the product claim uh, conformance to a specific profile, you know exactly the set of features that those two um, items uh, supports. So you can easily see uh, in each profile the list of mandatory features that have to be supported to pass those uh, tests. <clears throat> As I mentioned, uh, a profile specified a set of features that must be supported by both client and device to pass this test. Uh, Tests, uh, test tools are developed by ONVIF and released regularly on uh, uh, yeah, um, twice, they're released twice a year. So every, every six months, there is a new uh, test tool released. Um, to, for the product to be conformant, it must support at least one profile. And of course it might, might support uh, several profiles when, when it's relevant. So the features in the profile could be either uh, mandatory or conditional. Of course, mandatory features are the ones that have to be supported uh, if the product want, uh, will be uh, conformant. Conditional features are the ones that uh, must be supported when relevant. So for instance, if you have pan tilt zoom camera, uh, that camera should support the features that are applicable for that. Uh, and of course, those features are not applicable for other devices, uh, which that do not have this functionality implemented. So uh, we have a number of profiles available today. And as you see uh, from the description of the profiles on this slide, uh, majority of them are within um, 
access control and uh, video uh, streaming storage and management. And also we have a profile M that we will be talking from the next slide uh, for metadata and events in analytics applications. So profile M, uh, this is one of the most recent additions into our portfolio. We released this uh, profile this summer, June. Uh, and um, this profile helps to uh, enable interoperability when it comes to analytics applications. So we see a, a rise of analytics applications in the market today in different areas. Uh, within security, obviously, uh, mostly driven by needs of object detection, classification of the objects and tracking. Uh, there is an area that we call business intelligence and very much uh, focused around um, people counting, vehicle and traffic analysis, uh, heat mapping and so on. Uh, IUT. Uh, such as smart building automation uh, and management uh, with the rise of uh, technological advancements of, to enable different sensors and uh, cloud-based system to, to work with the, the data generated by the, uh, by the sensors. And we also see that uh, all those uh, needs and all those applications in the sensors generate a huge amount of data. Uh, as we're coming from a video industry, uh, we generate a lot of video and there is no way uh, it's possible to, to really watch every sing single frame to understand what's going in the scene. So to make it more efficient, uh, there is a term of metadata that helps to tag different ele elements in the scene. So metadata is a data describing other data, such as video, for instance. So it is, explains uh, and describes uh, with the tags, explains different objects, uh, it's, it, it explains and, and tags uh, different parameters of those objects. It also helps to trigger automatic responses. So for instance, if you, you recognize a certain object in your scene, you can trigger a certain response. <clears throat> And also this data helps to uh, effectively and efficiently store and search components, uh, the, the content of interest. So for example, you might uh, want to store the video only when a certain action happens in your scene, or you want to trigger a certain uh, action when something uh, enters the, the scene. So if you have a... Um, person entering the scene, you want to tag it to be able to search for video material at, at a later stage. So at a glance, uh, profile M specify uh, metadata and events for analytics uh, applications. So uh, what uh, metadata is supported? Uh, how it's supported, what type of events and how those need to be interpreted, um, and how this uh, metadata and events are sent and uh, retrieved. Um, so the specification of Profile M are deliberately relaxed on requirement on, on the client to enable the possibility uh, for to conform, sorry, deliberately relax on requirement on the device to enable um, possibility for devices to be software services. So a software service uh, or physical device can be um, on with conformant device and, and uh, be able to <clears throat> um, tra uh, transport and um, generate uh, the, the metadata uh, to be interpreted by conformant clients. So the benefit of Profile M uh, is to, prov uh, one of the biggest benefits is to provide easy integration of analytics solutions. Uh, it's also easier integration with uh, IoT applications because part of, uh, of the uh, profile M specifications are MQTT, utilization of MQTT, which is broadly um, 
utilized by a variety of IoT platforms. Um, <clears throat> it also uh, give a great uh, product choice uh, for system integrators. I just, just checked before this webinar, as of today, we have 221 conformant products in our database. And uh, from the experience, I see that it's uh, probably the, the, the fastest uh, adoption of, of the profile. So we all no, always see a, uh, a small delay from you know, when the, the products, the, the profile uh, becomes released and when the products comes in, but the, for profile M, it's really going very, very fast, uh, showing that the, there is a large interest and demand on the market for uh, products uh, supporting the analytics uh, applications. Um, of course, uh, this, uh, those products could be combined with the other on with video or access control uh, products to, to be integrated in, in the system um, utilizing on with interfaces. As I mentioned before, utilization and usage of on with interfaces future proofs your system for more secure investment going forward. So, as I mentioned, um, ONVIF Profile M supports metadata. So it supports uh, analytic configuration. It also provides the, uh, the definition of uh, specific objects that could be uh, recognized in the scene. Uh, there is a, a generic object classes uh, available for the application vendors to, to define the class uh, themselves. And also there are some most common uh, classes that def we define uh, in, in the profile, such as uh, geolocation, uh, for instance, the, the, where the PTZ camera is uh, looking at the moment. So we can try to transfer this information, uh, tag this information in the video and transfer to the client. Uh, vehicle, what type of vehicle uh, uh, is, is in the scene? Is it a bus, is it a car or a motorcycle? Uh, license plate, the information about the actual license plate in, in, the, <clears throat> in this scene, what type of license plate. Also, um, the information about human face and human body. The use cases th that could be um, uh, realized utilizing those classes uh, and this functionality are, for instance, uh, displaying object of interest in video. So like bounding boxes, as you see in the picture on the schematics uh, in the slide, uh, this information could also be used uh, by uh, heat mapping in, in different locations. Uh, it could map the idle spaces, for instance, in parking lots, because you, you, you can see the objects moving, you can identify, you can tag them, them you can see the free spaces. You can also, uh, utilize this data to be stored together with video to, for later search uh, in, in this video. On the um, profile M also supports events. So typical events uh, that are supported are, for instance, uh, line crossing, or uh, for object counting. So if you have a certain object that you identified and it's crossing a, a line, you can create an event that can be <clears throat> utilized for, for instance, uh, visitor statistic, crowd control, or, or queue management. Um, you could identify a license plate that create, create, creates event for access control uh, to a parking lot. So you can build a system with a very efficient um, support of um, access control based on a license plate as entry cred credentials. Uh, same for access control with the face utilizing facial recognition into, into the building premise. So uh, on with uh, profile M uh, also defines how the, the, the metadata uh, is packaged uh, and transferred from the uh, from the conformant device into the conformant client. Uh, the there is a list of uh, 
mandatory interfaces, which in the standardized metadata stream defined by the profile, and also some conditional interfaces uh, that are defined, as I mentioned. Um, and also very important, we if client uh, and uh, device have a capability of uh, transferring and uh, receiving MQTT events, uh, there is a, a conditional interface for MQTT uh, and uh, that's uh, utilized to transfer adjacent formatted uh, events between conformant device and client. One example of uh, profile M usage uh, for uh, IoT system is, uh, for instance, if you have a camera uh, installed in the premises uh, that supports uh, uh, MQTT, um, so this camera could uh, detect uh, and recognize with the analytics uh, a person, then the, the event uh, is sent over the MQTT uh, as a J JSON package event uh, uh, sent from the camera to the uh, application in, in the cloud, for instance, or IoT service that uh, in turn could uh, um, adjust the temperature in this room where these people enter the room. So this is just an example to show that and the information from the camera could be utilized in a multiple way to create a different type of solution, not necessarily uh, focused entirely on the security, but also to manage the, the uh, smart buildings uh, system and automation. So you can find uh, more information generically about uh, only for now uh, web page. Uh, information about uh, profiles and specification can also be seen there, uh, as well as uh, the list of all conformant products with information of the features supported by those products. And as I mentioned before, uh, we have over 22,000 conformant products at the moment in the database. Um, and uh, by that, I would like to finalize the presentation part of it. Um, Thank you for listening and uh, let's open for questions. Great, thank you, Leo. That's a very interesting presentation. And I'm glad we, you know, you covered their profile in, um, in some, some good detail. And of course, if anyone wants more information or to look at, you know, other standards, um, standard profiles, you can go to onviv.org. We've had some uh, questions come in already, uh, some technical ones, which we will definitely cover. Um, but um, as uh, as Leo said, like please uh, put your questions in now. We've got plenty of time to to cover them. Um, I think I mean I just kick off with um, some sort of more uh, like it, broadly speaking with Onviv. I mean, are you also considering um, other profiles that might become applicable to building automation? Is this an area of like real interest for you guys going forward? Smart buildings, building automation. Um, well, it's uh, kind of two different questions. So uh, we are considering uh, new profiles. Uh, we, we do work with the specification first and try to understand what technology uh, can help our industry to grow, uh, whether that um, um, technology will, will end up in a specific profile. It's up to our members. Um, and when, when they, they need it. Uh, but there are several different technologies are now at, in, in the works and, and we will probably see uh, more coming up uh, going forward. So this work is uh, to a very large extent is triggered by uh, the trends that we see in the market, not, not only in, in the video surveillance industry, but also uh, in IoT domain, in cloud computing uh, and it's also triggered by specific needs in different industries like uh, smart building automation, smart cities, um, surveillance industry. So building automation as, as area is very interested, interesting uh, because a lot of our members are active in this domain uh, and we see a lot of 
uh, how should I say, convergence of the technology going into different um, into the different areas. So the, the technologies that have been pre predominantly developed for a specific business uh, starting to find their way to other areas. So something that's been developed specifically for surveillance going into IoT or some uh, pure IT uh, technologies ending up in, in, uh, in building automations. So I, I, yes, to answer your question, yes, we're still looking at different uh, pr new profiles and yes, those will be uh, of a benefit for, uh, for small, smart buildings. Great, okay, yeah. Um... Um, makes sense. I mean, some interesting points there about how decisions are made. So you, you I and mean, obviously you are chairman of the steering committee and the, you have some certain companies that sit on that as members. And I guess decisions are made then collectively. Um, is that generally sort of how, how, how it works? Yeah, the decision process in all of is based on uh, consensus. Uh, so the decisions are made uh, by the members. Uh, the, the, the positions in different committees um, are defined in, in the voting process uh, annually. So, um, so every position is, in, is an elected position, but all, even more important that companies that are members are, uh, can participate in the working groups generating the actual um, uh, the actual uh, specifications and uh, uh, actual profiles uh, and if uh, there is a, a set of members so, uh, that are interested in a specific technology or a specific interface and want to drive the work um, to standardize that this is exactly how it's uh, happening uh, so that the work that we do and priorities that we put are totally member driven. Okay, <clears throat> thank you. Yeah. Well, let's take some of these, uh, these, these technical questions. Um, is there a definition of how Onviv specifications align with um, other um, object models and services of BACnet? Um, is, that, is that something that is, um, that you guys have, have, have thought about aligning with, with BACnet? Um, it's a little bit uh, too technical for me to be honest, but uh, when it comes to, to, to BACnet, I mean, um, we, I, I would like to say it in a slightly different way. So um, um, a system integration that they used to, to backnet uh, and build systems uh, based on, on this uh, set of protocols mm -hmm. uh, would have a larger uh, extent of um, devices coming from completely different industry, like uh, video surveillance industry, for instance, um, and be able to, to include those devices as a sensors generating data to be used in, uh, uh, in BACnet. But today we don't really have uh, a one-to-one -one mapping. Uh, at the same time, we see that there are open interfaces uh, and open uh, um, um, open protocols like MQTT uh, or de facto standards pro protocol like MQTT have been used in, in multiple uh, in variety of systems. So I think that helps uh, integrators to connect um, devices from different uh, protocols or different domains like BACnet and, 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 and ONVIF. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but no. I think it's an interesting uh, question, though. And if uh, there are companies that are int more interested in, in driving that, please come to us and le let's have a discussion about that. Mm. Yeah, and I guess it ties into this, uh, this second question as well, because, I mean, obviously, a large part of Profile M is about the, the metadata, of course, right, the, the, mm -hmm. that, you, that you use. Um, there is also um, something similar within building automation. This this uh, called Project Haystack, which is also about defining um, metadata. Um, is is the model of profile and does it incorporate or take into account um, some Project Haystack specification, um, or or could it in the future um, be some alignment there? Well, the um, 
once the profile is defined, it's static. So it, it's not changing because <clears throat> it needs to be there to, to ensure the compatibility with devices. So uh, um, the profile M is not gonna change. Mm -hmm. uh, having said that, um, it's uh, really utilizing uh, a standard way of uh, packaging and transferring the data utilizing MQTT. So what we're adding to that is uh, a definition of, uh, of the objects uh, that are identified in the scene uh, <clears throat> to make sure uh, that the receiving party understands uh, and can uh, act upon the received message through, uh, through the interface. So um, I'm not aware about the specific work going on to, to ensure uh, that's uh, uh, interface the, the the collaboration with the, this the project that you refer to uh, uh, but but again uh, onvif is open to uh, all companies and all vendors so if there is a market need if there is an opportunity uh, that it will gain from standardizing that uh, even further. I think it's very uh, interesting topic to discuss. Uh, uh, so again, uh, it sounds like I'm inviting you guys again, but uh, please join us. Uh, yeah, <clears throat> great. Um, and then a, a final question, I think similar to the first, but more about the um, profile, um, so the event model, right, where you talked about, um, you know, profile M being used to, to trigger um, specific events. Um, is there um, any, uh, um, is there going to be some alignment or mapping, do you think, in the future between um, the profile M event model and um, other models like BACnet? Uh, to facilitate and basically to help facilitate this kind of integration with building automation. Um, uh, uh, profile M um, it, it is is static, so it, it's it's there. So the spe specifications are set. So the, the rest of um, uh, alignment work between different interfaces and transcoding uh, different interfaces is done within an integration project. Of course, is if there is a, a greater need uh, for um, uh, wide demand in the industry, so I, I would imagine that several of our members will drive this work in the working group and committees to make sure that uh, future um, specifications and profiles support that type of integration. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, thanks. I but, mean, yeah, uh, again, I mean, it's it's very much to uh, to answer uh, one of your first questions about how the decisions are made. Uh, if if market need and and uh, members are really uh, sure that uh, the market would benefit about uh, would will benefit from standardizing uh, way different components in the system communicate. Uh, this is how, the, uh, you know, the specifications are created. This is how they end up in the profiles and brought to the market. Mm -hmm. I had some thoughts about the, um, the use case that you showed as well. I mean, could we pull up that slide where you showed um, sort of uh, an example use case of uh, sure. profile? Let's see. I can share my screen again. Just stay with me. I will flip to this slide. Thanks. For the automation with the okay. Yeah, I guess some um, is interesting. I mean, the the around sort of using profile M uh, to integrate room temperature control with 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 a video camera, for example. I mean, I mean, is this sort of a logical? You see, this is sort of a logical use case, or um, or do you see other more other use cases as well around maybe like core building efficiencies or um, business intelligence, for example. 
Absolutely. So we see multiple examples um, already implemented in the market where, we, <coughs> with the help uh, of Profile M. For instance, if we take a um, um, retail um, store or shopping mall, especially now in the time of uh, pandemic, uh, in different countries, different rules apply when it comes to crowd control uh, and uh, people counting in premises. So we see uh, utilization of um, uh, of that uh, interfaces and protocols uh, to maintain uh, visitors level on on the uh, where it's allowed by regulations uh, to prevent uh, virus spreading for instance mm -hmm. so we see uh, several implementations that um, where camera counts objects in the scene transfer the events through a um, mqtt broker uh, to the um, iot service that connects uh, to uh, example um, a guard who can man maintain uh, the crowd and you know create a line maybe outside the shopping mall or whatever it might be uh, as an example also we have seen um, example our optimization of um, uh, parking lot solutions uh, guiding uh, vehicles to different areas uh, of uh, of parking lot to uh, prevent uh, congestions and make the flow of the vehicles in, in the parking uh, more efficient. Mm. So it's it's very di different areas uh, uh, that, that are applicable. We've seen example of uh, maintaining access controls with uh, transferring the, the, the data uh, this way. So it's very different uh, applications. It's not, not necessarily uh, connected to a people counting use case. Uh, but we have um, different uh, areas and it's a lot of vendors are starting to jump on board with that. And I think one of the key, key uh, uh, benefits with Profile M is actually a, a possibility for conformant device be a, a software. So a software uh, service or cloud uh, based service could also be a conformant device transferring this uh, metadata to uh, another iot system so i think it's it's really gives a possi possibility to to utilize uh, different ways and different um, kind of uh, sensors uh, even software sensors to to provide the data for for building automation mm. yeah okay that is interesting um, you also showed a slide where I think uh, further along around some of the the, the metadata about um, in what sort of format it was in. I think you mentioned um, it's standardized XML. Yeah, here. Um, and the, these two conditional methods uh, for communicating events, and obviously one which I think will be of interest to quite a lot of people, like this JSON formatted. MQTT, which are, are kind of you know widely accepted um, yeah. <clears throat> standards. Uh, um, when you say conditional, is that it? Just that's an option for you to use. Um, so if let's say uh, let's say we have a camera uh, that supports uh, MQTT, so there is a service and, and the camera supports the MQTT protocol uh, as such. Uh, for that camera, the the, the MQTT requirement for for uh, for ONVIF will be uh, um, applicable, but if if the product the sensor, for instance, is not supporting MQTT, then it's uh, it's not there. It's so conditional means uh, it have to be implemented in the protocol if the device or client supports that in the first place. But there are certain uh, mandatory requirements that um, have to be there. So. The, the metadata stream, for instance, uh, in Profile M have to be supported. This is a mandatory requirement. There is a very uh, well-defined list of uh, uh, what, um, what uh, features are mandatory uh, and what condition. I could actually bring this up if this is of interest. I have it just in this presentation, mm, okay. but, but hidden. Just give me a second. So here we are. So, so this is uh, a list of different uh, 
um, features for device and client. Um, and um, you see M for mandatory and uh, C for conditionals. Conditional. Okay, yeah. Mm, very interesting. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, just a reminder to everybody out there, if you've got some um, some questions for Leo or for myself, then uh, please put them in the, the Q&A box. I guess, I mean, we had some sort of specific questions earlier around some of the technical aspects, but I think one of them I'd be interested in, you know, if I put on, let's say, my systems integrator hat, right, and I'm working on building automation or smart building projects, I mean, how would you... How would how would you then sort of describe or expect those type of people to view on Viv Profile M and use it? I mean, are there are there sort of, for example, particular use cases that you think will be of a benefit to them? I think um, if you um, system integrator, so what on Viv brings you is a. a um, a new ecosystem uh, with well-established vendors, well-established uh, markets, um, a new ecosystem of devices and, and services and clients that you could uh, connect uh, to, to your systems and offer uh, new uh, opportunities, new, new possibilities for, for your customers. So Onviv um, brings a, a large um, uh, number of um, potential functionalities uh, into the smart building domain. Um, and um, I think you can see um, you can see that as a additional asset uh, that could be used in very open uh, and transparent way. Mm -hmm. And I guess if you are working on a project, you know, you then can see there, we've got the, um, the URL up there. If you want to look at what products are conformant, they can go to onviv.org and find yeah. it out, right? Yeah. And of, of course, um, a, a, if we see today in what industries onviv are uh, well adopted, it's it's very much within within video industry. So whether it's video surveillance or security, and also in access control. So those two uh, are very much connected to to the. To, to, to smart build smart buildings, whether for security purposes, for um, to increase efficiency in people flow, uh, or to uh, to ensure uh, access control uh, in the buildings. Yeah, exactly. And I think you know there's an increasing need to um, integrate or make you know some video cameras interoperable, right? But I mean, for example, perhaps not within the building, but I mean, you gave some examples of smart parking. I mean, I think obviously like, for example, number plate recognition is something which is done extremely well by video cameras. And there could be definitely a need to integrate that more for, for smart parking applications. Um, yeah, and, as an example, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, are there other, other industries where Onviv is, is active or becoming more widely adopted? Um, it's um, started in, in, in pure surveillance industry uh, to facilitate the very specific use cases with an, <clears throat> with an interoperability between uh, uh, security camera and uh, uh, video management system. Uh, but what we see today that it's, it, it, as I mentioned in the, in the beginning, we see a convergence of the technologies and, and it's becoming uh, the, the video ca the, the camera becomes not only a, uh, a device that generates a video but it generates a lot of data uh, that is used in different industries so uh, it's uh, going into the direction of uh, uh, industry applications uh, automation in in the industry in the production, uh, so where camera detects certain ob objects on the belt, uh, conveyor belt, and then uh, triggers a certain set of actions in the production line. Uh, so of course we see a lot of uh, applications in uh, in uh, smart cities uh, for for traffic control, uh, and those applications uh, and and systems are built utilizing on with interfaces. Uh, we also see. Uh, a lot of different applications and use within smart building automations. And as I mentioned, uh, for uh, different applications, uh, 
for, for temperature control in, in, in the meeting rooms, for instance. Um, so when more people entering the room uh, and camera counts, then you can increase the, the, the uh, airflow. So <clears throat> it, uh, with the increased usability uh, and the increased capacity of the sensor, such as camera, for instance, uh, you open up um, to different industries and on with profiles, on with interfaces helps to really get this data in the standard way to the system that could act upon it. So it's, it's using, um, it, it's utilized in more industries today than it was uh, some years ago where it was really only focusing on a very specific uh, video surveillance case. But mm -hmm. today it's becoming more wider and it's not only driven by, by members, but also by technologies and technology enablers. So uh, today we see more use of uh, protocols uh, as uh, yeah, MQTT, for instance, which is widely used in, 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 in IoT mm -hmm. sector. And, uh, uh, that helps really to convey the, the data generated by the devices to a receiving system. Right, and in you saying that um, sort of in inquiries, your or members that are joining now are sort of not your, let's say, traditional video surveillance manufacturers, right? You. Well, we have uh, we have different types of of um, members. So we have a large number of video surveillance manufacturers, obviously. Um, we have a large number of uh, access control, uh, both vendors that working with devices, but also with the systems. Uh, we have uh, a large number of, uh, significant number, I would say, of integrators, the people who really work on building the system and they want to uh, participate the standardization work so that it gives them a possibility to form the offering uh, best possible way. So we have in different industries and different roles within the industries that are participating uh, work. And it's quite interesting read actually, if you can see in our web page, there is a section with the member information. It's quite a lot of <clears throat> companies that are active it's uh, as i mentioned over 500 companies as of today uh, and those companies are active in different domains in different uh, uh, businesses different industries so i, mm -hmm. I think it's, pull it's that up? we can't see it on the screen actually i can try to share that that's probably a good time for me just to say we're you know we're coming to the towards the end of the webinar now so if there are some final questions for for leo or myself um, please, uh, please put them in the, the chat or the Q&A box. So uh, on, on the web page, you can find information about the conformant products. Uh, uh, so there is a database with all the products that are uh, fulfilling the requirements of a specific profile or combination of those. Uh, but also, as I mentioned, we have a, a member list here uh, that, yeah, you can take a look um, in the companies, company list that you probably will recognize quite a lot of uh, companies even in the, uh, in smart building automation domain. Mm, yeah, okay. And that's searchable, I guess, by, uh, by, by name and stuff, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can check that out. Yeah, it's a long, great. So yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I just I mean, invite you to, to, to look at the uh, website and then for, for the technical uh, questions and uh, uh, specification, there are uh, quite a lot of information about uh, uh, specifications and, and profiles. Also a very interesting comment here. Um, we do embrace an open way of doing stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, on the specifications, uh, release specifications are actually a, an open source project. So it's available on, on uh, GitHub. Uh, so everybody can see and comment and uh, improve them. Uh, so it's really um, kind of boosting the, the openness in, 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 in the organization. So right. everybody, even from outside the organization, could see the, the, the specifications. Nice. We'll put a link to that in the. Uh, yes, I will provide on, it to on the website. Yeah, the get to the GitHub repository. Great. Um, 
Well, I think that's that's pretty. I mean, I think my last comment would be just around you know the it. It has had quite, I mean, quite a profound effect, I think, on video surveillance, on with, um, you know, from turning it into what was quite a proprietary, you know, business industry, yeah. one that is now more open and and more conformant, right, to sort of standards across different 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 vendors. So yeah, I to totally agree. It's uh, it's ha had a massive effect, but I think. Uh, it also followed the needs of the industry and um, we, the shortest way for, for a vendor to reach the market is probably to define something in the beginning, to define something proprietary. But when it comes to a <coughs> critical mass on the market, when the, it's, it becomes more and more uh, different components available, the, 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 the need of interoperability and openness increases. Uh, so there is a larger demands uh, on open system comes with, with time. And I think on we've been uh, serving this purpose very well over the last years uh, since it's been founded where uh, it's really solved the situation of uh, difficult interface implementation between uh, surveillance camera and uh, video management system. And now we see that uh, uh, on with interface is an open standard to really connect those devices and we entering uh, um, area of uh, video analytics and, and access control and really driving the uh, open interface ideology into this, those industries. I think it's, it's, re it's really uh, interesting to see how the industry adopts it mm -hmm. and adopts. And it's really uh, fascinating to see a, a pace of adoption uh, by vendors because they see the benefit of that. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And look, um, you know, anyone listening out there, of course, if you want to get involved, then uh, go to, I would say, onviv, onviv.org. Um, and I will put a link in the, the show notes to the GitHub repository as well. So you can check that out. Um, and just to remind everybody that we did record the session. So I'll make sure that we put that up on, on our website and you'll be getting a, a link to it uh, tomorrow. Um, so yeah, I think that's that wraps it up for today. Um, just to say, Leo, of course, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me. Any final uh, comments for, for the listeners? Um, no, I think it's uh, it's very uh, interesting, and I think that the industry of uh, smart buildings it's 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 a growing uh, uh, it's a growing sector, and it, it's growing industry, and it's uh, definitely. Uh, uh, plenty of opportunities to, to collaborate uh, with ONVIF uh, and to utilize um, the protocols that ONVIF provides uh, to build efficient system to serve the customer needs in this area. Yes. Good. Well, look, thanks again. Um, and obviously, thank you to everyone um, who listened. Um, and uh, we hope you enjoyed it. And stay tuned for... Uh, for the next webinars, we'll, we have lots more content coming this year. That's both podcasts, webinars, and of course, um, articles through our website as well. Um, yeah, um, but if you're interested in looking at previous uh, content, then also you can find us on YouTube if you search for Smart Building Series. Again, thank you for listening. Um, just uh, enough time to say goodbye. And thanks, Leo. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah.